Hi guys, welcome to your lesson on tables and charts in Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, today we're basically going to look at different types of charts and when to use different types of charts like line charts, bar charts, and pie charts, and all kinds of different other charts. We're also going to learn about tables. We're going to learn about um, something called headers and header rows in tables, and we're going to learn about rows and columns and formatting tables and all kinds of good stuff. So let's just get right into it. Our learning goal here is you will be able to embed and manipulate charts, graphs, tables, spreadsheets, flowcharts, and organizational charts. That's a lot. Uh, and then here's our vocab words. Uh, we have tables, we have rows and columns, column chart, line chart, bar chart, pie chart, area chart, surface chart, oh my. And then we have uh, parts of a chart. Uh, we have legend, we have vertical axis, horizontal axis, chart axis, and alt text. Okay, and here's our first little introductory video. If you haven't watched this yet, pause me and go ahead and watch this little video. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our, our pre-made document here uh, from tile number three. And we're going to go ahead and download this thing. When we crack this thing open, I want to say this is going to be pretty blank looking. And then we'll look at our directions and what we have to do here. Yeah, she's pretty blank. Yeah. Okay, so let's get in and see what exactly we have to do. Let me scoot this up a little bit. Uh, our directions are in tile number four, or at least part one is here. Uh, open the practice presentation, which we just did. It's the same thing that I just put on tile number three. In fact, I don't know if I need tile number three. On the last slide, insert a table of five columns and three rows into the content box. All right, so columns and rows, let's get into it. Tables, right here, insert table. You can do it this way with the content box, and this is probably the easiest way to do it. So you can just type in five columns, three rows, and say, boom, it should look something like that. If you don't want to do it that way, <clears throat> you can always go to the insert tab, and you can say insert table, and you can actually draw out your columns and rows, all right? Uh, so it wanted it to be uh, three, uh, I forget already what it said, uh, five columns, three rows, or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Boom. All right, now if you don't know what a column and a row is, uh, a column goes up and down. So these are columns in a table right here, and rows go side to side. And notice how I'm hovering, in order to select the entire row or column, I'm hovering outside of my table and then clicking when my cursor turns to a downward facing arrow or a right facing arrow. That way you're selecting an entire column or a row. And then you can right click on that column and row and you can delete them or insert new ones or do whatever you got to do. Uh, but don't ever do one of these jobs in order to select a column. All right, always click, uh, wait for your down arrow and select the entire column with your down arrow. All right, and let's see what else we got to do here. Um, in the header row, the first row, type the name months uh, of the month January through May. In the second and third row, type sales amounts of your choice. We're basically making up a chart is what we're doing here. All right, so January. February. And all I'm doing is pressing tab on my keyboard to go to the next cell uh, to the right. March, April, May. All right. And then we're making up sales amounts. All right, I'm just going to do like 35 or, okay, 225, uh, 335, 445, 555, 665. Um, press enter. Uh, where am I? 667, 75, 885, 1005. 11. All right, I'm just making up numbers to fill in our table. Change the style of the table to light style to accent three. All right, so just like everything else, when you click on something in PowerPoint, you get table tools and you get a table tools design and you get a table tools layout tab up here. All right, and under the table tools uh, design tab, you're going to see that basically we have some table styles. And if you click the drop down, they're broken apart into three categories. You have light, you have medium, and then you have dark, all right? And the directions, it says it wants a light style to accent three. So we know we're going to be in the light group. We're going to be in style two, accent three, which is this one here. All right, 
And all a table style does is it uh, affects the formatting of the table. So it gives the header row a uh, color to it, a uh, fill color to the cells, um, whereas another table style, where is it, would give my header row and like the first row uh, or the second row some color. There's some down here. All right, so table styles are just ways of formatting your tables. That's all it is. And they all have these weird names like light style 2 x 3 Insert a column on the left side of the table. All right, so on the left side of the table, we're going to insert a column. Uh, right click and say insert column to the left. All right, just like that. On the second row of the new column, type north region. On the third row, type south region. On the second row of the new column, type north region. Oh, yeah, okay, north and south region. And then south region, just like that. Delete the last column, resize your table so that it takes up the majority of the slide. Delete the last column, right click, delete, column. Okay. Resize your table so that it takes up the majority of the actual slide. All right, something like that. All right, uh, center your text and numbers horizontally and vertically. All right, so when, uh, let's go ahead and select our entire table here. Click on the entire table. And up here, you're going to notice that we have text alignments, and we have a lot more alignments than we usually have. We have alignment to the left here. We have alignment to the center. And then we have alignment to the right. I want center. And then down here, we have a line top, a line vertically, and a line bottom. So I want to go ahead and align it vertically, just like that. All right, delete slide three of the presentation. Right click, delete slide, easy. Keep this presentation open as you move on to part two. Okay, and here, this is going to be all about charts. So if you haven't watched this little video yet, pause me to watch this little video. And then I guess we're going to go ahead and download this little presentation called Charts. All right, if you haven't already, go ahead and jump into tile number 6-2, and I guess we're going to download this presentation. And then we're going to jump into... Uh... Oh, yeah, so I remember this being pretty confusing, so be careful. Even though we have this presentation open, it looks so much like the other presentation. I know what we're going to do here. But remember, we're working with this one, with our monthly sales, all right? So this is the presentation we want to actually use, um, even though we have the other one open. I know that doesn't make sense right now. We also need to download this spreadsheet um, before we get into uh, our assignment direction. So open up your Excel spreadsheet here and go ahead and download it. And you can see it's basically uh, movies. And let me go ahead and open that too. And click Enable Editing. Close this out. All right, and just kind of minimize that for now. <clears throat> Let's see what we got going on here. All right, make sure that you are clicked on or below slide three and insert slides, reuse slides from the charts, practice, PowerPoint presentation. So this is kind of important. All right, make sure that you're clicked below slide three <clears throat> in the presentation that we've been working on up until this point. So you should have monthly sales in slide three. Click below that. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert a new slide, but we're going to do something called reuse slides, which means we're basically taking slides from an already existing presentation and just kind of stealing them and putting them into our presentation. Notice how there's this also, there's this option right here called slides from outline. This is only for Word documents, all right? Only for Word documents. So if you see .doc after the actual file name, you use this one. If it says PowerPoint or PPT, you use re reuse slides. All right, and we basically need to find the slides that we just saved, all right? And I just downloaded them. I don't even know where I downloaded them to, so let's just go ahead and look at the downloads. Alligator bar, I don't even know what that is. Animal rescue, oh my God, I do a lot of stuff here. Let me pause this so I can find it. 
So this is the presentation that I'm going to import. I'm going to import all four slides here. So right now I'm just going to minimize this and look at the title of it. This is PowerPoint Charts Practice. All right, I'm going to import those slides into this PowerPoint, which is called Tables Practice. All right, if you can't see that, Tables Practice. And I'm going to do that by saying Reuse Slides. So I'm going to say Reuse Slides. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I just closed it out. Reuse Slides, and you get this panel over here that opens up, and then you can browse for the file. Don't ever say Slide Library over there. See how I had the Slide Library thing? Don't ever use that. Browse File. I saved it to my desktop. This is the one I want called Charts Practice. I'm going to import it into the Tables Practice one, and that's why this uh, assignment is so confusing. When you say Reuse Slides, notice how you get all four slides from the presentation that opens up over here. And I think they're going to want us to go ahead and import them all, but let me look at the directions real quick. Insert just slides three and four. Close the window. Okay. So just slides three and four. So let's go back here. And um, here's one, two, three, and four. So I'm just going to click once on three. I'm going to click once on four. And now I have brought that presentation into my tables practice presentation. All right. I'm going to close this out over here. If you still have your charts practice open, you can go ahead and close that out. All right. And now you should have five slides. Slide number one, first of all, you should only have tables practice open. Slide number one should be Crown and Griffin books. Slide two is the summary. There's the monthly sales that we just created, monthly sales by genre. And then we have a blank slide for monthly sales, but I bet we're going to do some stuff too, like charts. All right. Um, open up the practice. Oh, here. On the last slide, insert a line chart. All right. On the last slide, insert a line chart. So here's our charts. We're going to go over here and say line chart. And it just says line chart, so I'm literally just going to insert a line chart. You have stacked line charts, you have 100% stacked line, you have line with markers, stacked line with markers, you have all these different kind of line charts, and line charts are good for showing trends over time. So we're going to go ahead and insert a line chart here, and notice how when we insert a new chart, we actually get a little piece of an Excel spreadsheet that opens up here, all right? And we're going to basically replace this data. Um, this is very similar to something that you have to do in your test, and it's very confusing on your test, all right? So it says... Um, open up the practice workbook in Excel. We already cracked that one open and we're going to copy and paste the data and paste it into cell A1. So here's our data right here. We're going to copy and paste all this stuff. Copy. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that spreadsheet and paste into cell A1. All right. And now notice how our chart now has, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of column one, I think. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. It doesn't want me to. As long as I don't see it in my chart, that's fine. And I I don't. Classics, romance, sci-fi, mystery, young adult. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right, so notice how um, in my Excel spreadsheet, I get this bounding box in blue. This is important, all right? So if you ever wanted to exclude a month, let's say I wanted to get rid of June, instead of deleting June's data, I can just take this little bounding box and scooch it over and get rid of June. And look, no, no longer do I have June down here. I have January, February, March, April, May. And all my lines are actually color coded. To put June back in here, just grab the box and pull it back over. All right, so now I have some data in my chart here, all right? And notice over here, all I really have is this horizontal axis data, which is basically showing me the months. So each one of these lines is representing a month. So there's January, uh, February, March, April, May, June, July. All right, and I think we can close this out, but let me go, go ahead and make sure. Uh, rename the chart title Sales by Genre. Here, let's get rid of this spreadsheet. Rename the chart title Sales by Genre. All right. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and close this out because I think I'm done with it. I hope I am. Change the chart type to a clustered bar chart. All right. So I've got a line chart right now. I want to go ahead and change the chart type. So instead of replacing it, I'm going to come over here to where it says change chart type. I'm going to say bar chart and I want a clustered bar chart. Not a 3D cluster, just a cluster bar. And it's going to make it a little easier to read. 
all right, so now here's my young adult books. And in June, uh, May, April, and I can kind of see um, what a bar chart does and a column chart does is it compares things. And you can quickly see like which uh, month. It looks like June had the best month for young adults. All right, and then um, for mystery, it looks like May had the best month. All right, and you can kind of quickly see that stuff if you uh, change the chart type. So certain charts are better for certain types of data, all right? And uh, bar charts are good for comparing. Use the quick layout drop menu to change the layout to layout 10. So check this out, quick layout, uh, they're numbered. So just kind of find layout 10, and that's what it should look like there. Your chart layouts are over here. If you ever wanna add a chart element, you do it from over here, okay? Uh, click the chart element shortcut button, click the arrow next to the axis titles and select the primary horizontal axis title. All right, so right here, we have chart elements just like up here, and it wants us to do an axis title, and it wants us to put a check where it says primary horizontal axis title, not vertical, just primary horizontal axis title. Double click the axis title, let me name it sales profits. All right, so just go in here, rename it sales profits. All right just like that. All right, and I think that's the end. So you should have five slides right now, guys. And uh, that's just a little bit about tables and charts. It's definitely not everything, but it's a little taste of tables and charts. All right, so I hope this is an easy one for you.